Okay, we're going to pick back up here with sodium chloride. This one is aqueous, okay? If it's aqueous, then you do have water present, which means you've got the H plus and you've got the OH minus. This is going to change your answer, okay? It's sodium chloride, so you still have the Na plus and the Cl minus that you've had before, but now you've also got H plus and you've got OH minus two. That means you've got two positive ions that are both going to go to the cathode, but only one of these products can form. It's going to be either sodium, or hydrogen. The least reactive always forms. Hydrogen is less reactive than all of your metals apart from copper. So unless your metal is copper, if it's aqueous, the answer is always going to be hydrogen. Always, always, always. Um, at the anode, you have got Cl minus and you've got OH minus. They're both going to go to the anode. The halogen always forms. Halogens at group seven, chlorines in group seven. Chlorine is going to be your answer. If we look at the next page again, so this is my cathode, which is negative, and my anode is positive. Oh, sorry. Um, magnesium bromide in solution. Remember, in solution means you have got water. Okay, so I've got my magnesium, my Mg2+, and my bromine ions as normal, but I've also got H+, and I've got OH-. I've got two positive ions that can both go to the cathode. Only one of them is going to form at the cathode. The least reactive always forms. Hydrogen is less reactive than every metal apart from copper. So hydrogen is going to be your answer. On the other side, you've got bromine and OH minus. The halogen always forms. Bromine is a halogen. Bromine is going to be your answer. Calcium chloride, aqueous. Again, that little state symbol tells you you've got H plus and OH minus present. Calcium chloride, you've got Ca2 plus. It's in group two. You've got Cl minus. You've also got your H plus and your OH minus. Your two positive ions, calcium and hydrogen, both go to the anode. Sorry, cathode. Both go to the cathode. Only one of them can form. Hydrogen is less reactive than calcium. It's less reactive than every metal but copper. Hydrogen is going to be your answer. Chlorine and OH minus. Chlorine is a halogen. Chlorine is going to form. Potassium bromide in solution. In solution means you've got water present. So I've got my K plus and I've got my Br minus from potassium bromide. I've also got H plus and I've got OH minus. My positive ions are potassium and hydrogen. Hydrogen is less reactive than potassium. It's less reactive than every metal apart from copper. Next one, I've got copper chloride in solution. So my copper ion here, I needed two chlorines to bond to copper. So copper must be two plus. Chlorine is always Cl minus. And then I've got H plus and I've got OH minus. I've got copper and I've got hydrogen. They're both going to go to the cathode. The least reactive always forms. I've told you that copper is less reactive than hydrogen, okay? It's the only metal that's less reactive than hydrogen. So if you've got copper as your metal and it's in solution or it's aqueous, copper will be your answer. If it's not copper, if it's any other metal in solution or aqueous, your answer is going to be hydrogen, okay? And again, at the anode, you have got chlorine, okay? If you haven't done any of these yourself, please don't just sit here and copy me. Do them by yourself. Pause the video and then come back and check the answers. I am going to continue on, but do them by yourself instead of just listening to me. You don't know if you can do them unless you've tried them by yourself. Next one I've got is copper bromide. Again, it's aqueous. I've got... Cu2 plus, I've got Br minus, and I've got my H plus and my OH minus. Copper and hydrogen both going to the cathode. Copper is less reactive. Copper is going to form. And then I have got bromine. Aqueous, again, means there's water. You've got lithium chloride, Li plus, Cl minus, H plus, OH minus. Lithium and hydrogen both going to the cathode. Hydrogen is less reactive, it's less reactive than every metal, but copper. And I've got chlorine, okay? Aqueous sodium iodide, I've got water present, so I've got Na+, plus. I've got I-, minus. iodine's in group 7, I've got H+, plus. I've got OH-, minus. sodium and hydrogen both go into your cathode. Hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, hydrogen forms. On the other side, I've got my halogen as iodine. I'm going to do these a little bit faster. Magnesium chloride. Magnesium is my metal. I've got magnesium and hydrogen both going to the cathode. Hydrogen's less reactive. Hydrogen's going to form. 
the other side, I've got chlorine. The next one, oh, actually aqueous sodium sulfate. So we, we will do this one properly. Uh, your ions, you're going to have Na plus sulfate. You need to know the sulfate ion, okay? It's not just sulfur. Sulfate, you've got sulfur and you've got oxygen. And the sulfur and oxygen don't separate. They stay together as SO42 minus. It is an ion that you are supposed to know. You just have to learn it. You can't get it from your periodic table. So SO42 minus is your negative ion. And it's aqueous, so you've got your H plus and you've got your OH minus. Okay, your two positive ions, sodium and hydrogen. Again, hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, so you're going to get hydrogen. Here, you've got OH minus and you've got SO42 minus. Now, the rule has always been that the halogen is going to form. You don't have a halogen. Okay, when you've got a sulfate and you, instead of a halogen, you are going to get oxygen as your product at the anode. Okay, the only two situations you're going to have is you're either going to have a halogen, in which case the halogen forms, or you can have a sulfate, in which case oxygen forms. So halogen's your answer if it's there. If it's not there, if they've given you sulfate instead, you're going to get oxygen. Okay, next one, magnesium sulfate. Okay, you've got magnesium. It's aqueous. Magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen, so hydrogen's going to form. You've got a sulfate, your answer is going to be oxygen. Aqueous copper sulfate, okay, it's aqueous and my metal is copper, which means copper will be my answer. Sulfate means my answer is going to be oxygen. Molten copper iodide, okay, I've gone back to molten. If it's molten, you have got no H2O, which means there's no hydrogen there. I'm going to have copper, and I'm going to have iodine. I've only got two elements, copper and iodine, so they're going to be my two products. Here, I've got lead chloride, and it's liquid, okay? Liquid means there's no water present. I've only got two elements, and they're going to be my products. Lead sulfate aqueous, okay? It's a metal. No, sorry, the metal is lead. Lead is not copper, and if it's not copper and it's aqueous, then your answer is always going to be hydrogen. Uh, sulfate means your answer is going to be oxygen over here. Iron chloride in solution, again, you've got water present. Um, hydrogen is going to form because your metal is not copper. Copper is the only metal that will form if it's in solution. Your answer will always be hydrogen if your answer is not, if your metal is not copper and it's in solution. And then you've got chlorine. Magnesium iodide, it's liquid. You've only got two elements present, magnesium and iodine. Liquid sodium fluoride, so you've got sodium and fluorine, your only elements present. Whoop. Aqueous calcium bromide, aqueous, you do have water, so you're going to get hydrogen, because hydrogen's less reactive than calcium, and you're going to get bromine. And then aqueous lithium chloride, you are going to get hydrogen, Whoop. and you're going to get chlorine. Okay, so I realise we've just done a lot of practice with that, but it is really, really important that you can do it. Um, the remaining questions here, I'm also going to answer with you. Please do them by yourself first. Don't just copy my answers. Try them by yourself. Pause the video, then come back and check mine. But I'm going to go through them now. The type of compounds that undergo electrolysis, ionic compounds. Okay, every single example that we've looked at has been an ionic compound with a metal and a non-metal. It doesn't work with covalent compounds. What state must be they? Oh, uh, must they be in? We know they have to be liquid. To be liquid, you can either be molten or you can be aqueous, but it has to be liquid. Why do solid compounds not conduct electricity? In solids, particles can't move freely. They can only vibrate. The ions have to be able to move to conduct electricity. So for solids, you say the ions can't move. If you wrote particles can't move, you're only going to get one mark. The word ions is worth the mark. The word can't move is your second mark. No mention of localized electrons. We're talking about ionic compounds. The charged particles are ions. What would you do to make it conduct electricity? We just said it needs to be molten or aqueous. So you would melt it or you would dissolve it in water and then it would conduct electricity. Why does molten? Okay, we said solids can't because the ions can't move. Molten can because the ions can move. Okay, ions, again, you need to use that word ions to get the mark, and then tell me they can move, and that's your second mark. Why does potassium not form at the cathode when aqueous potassium chloride is, is electrolyzed? Okay, so if you've got aqueous potassium chloride, that's KCl, aqueous means the ions you've got present are K plus Cl minus, it's aqueous, so I've also got H plus, and I've got OH minus. 
cathode, negative is cathode, okay? The two positive ions are gonna go to the cathode, which are K plus and H plus. They will both go to the cathode. Only one product can form. Least reactive product forms, so hydrogen forms. You're gonna say hydrogen forms. Hydrogen forms as hydrogen is less reactive than potassium. Is less, okay, I'm running out of space. Is less reactive than potassium would be your answer. Why do you see bubbles when aqueous sodium uh, chloride is electrolyzed and bubbles at the cathode, okay? If we look at sodium chloride, oop, they're telling me it's aqueous, so I know the ions present are Na plus, Cl minus, H plus, and OH minus. At the cathode, just like what we had with potassium, you're going to have sodium and uh, hydrogen both going to the cathode. Only one product is going to form. The least reactive forms. The least reactive is hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to form. Hydrogen is a gas at room temperature. So the reason you're seeing bubbles is because hydrogen gas is being produced. So all you need to say is hydrogen is formed and hydrogen is a gas. Explain why bubbles are seen at the anode. Okay, at your anode, you've got sodium chloride again, so you're going to have the same ions that we just had before, Na plus, Cl minus, H plus, and OH minus. This time they're asking me about the anode. Panic, positive is the anode, so they're asking about the positive electrode. Okay, um, to the positive electrode, Cl minus and OH minus will both go there. The halogen always forms, which means chlorine's forming. They're asking, why do you see bubbles at the anode? You're going to say, because chlorine forms at the anode. Chlorine is formed and chlorine is a gas. A gas. Uh, the last one. Oh, I need to finish this up. A student wants to obtain sodium, sodium chloride. Describe where, why uh, molten should be used in, rather than aqueous, okay? If you have used molten sodium chloride, you've only got two elements in there, and sodium forms at the cathode, and chlorine forms at the anode. If you use aqueous, then you have got four ions in there. You've got your sodium and your chloride ions, but you've also got H plus and OH minus. And hydrogen forms at the cathode. So you're trying to get sodium. If you dissolve it in water, you're not going to get sodium. You're only going to get hydrogen. If you want to get sodium, you have to melt sodium chloride instead of dissolve it in water. Because when it's dissolved in water, the least reactive forms, hydrogen forms, you don't get any sodium whatsoever. So you have to melt it. You can't just dissolve it in water. Um, if you've got any problems with any of this that we've just done in today's sheet, um, message me on Teams. Uh, ideally, just put it in the group chat rather than message me individually. Your question is probably the same as other somebody else's in the class. So if you just put it all in the group page, then it will save me answering the same questions uh, over and over and over again. So any questions on any of this, just put it in the group page. Um, I am going to set a quiz on Show My Homework on Friday that's based on this. Um, so if you don't understand it, please, please, please let me know. It's really important that we keep up with this um, so you don't end up falling um, behind.